After witnessing a murder, 13-year-old Rachel Gardner is sent to a hospital for counseling only to wake up in an unfamiliar building with no memory of how she got there, there the only way out is through an elevator, where a machine-generated voice over an intercom decrees her as a sacrifice for the inhabitants of the upper floors. As Rachel heads upwards from her current floor of B7 to B6, she encounters an insane bandaged man wielding a scythe and barely escapes death, managing to find another elevator that heads up to B5, on B5 she reunites with Daniel Dickens her counselor, although it is soon clear that Daniel is not trustworthy as he mainly talks about Rachel's blue eyes, and is crazily obsessed with them. When Rachel attempts to escape, Daniel locked the door as he has anticipated her distrust, as he corners her, threatening to take out her eyes, Daniel tells Rachel that she will be reunited with her parents in hell, this statement seems to evoke Rachel's lost memories, and Daniel stops to ask her to stay with him forever. However he is cut short when the man with the scythe cuts him through the gut, and is about to kill Rachel but finds her no longer afraid to be killed, the intercom designates the man as a new sacrifice for violating a rule of leaving his designated floor and attacking an inhabitant of another. As the man attempts to flee, Rachel approaches him and asks him to kill her. Realizing that he will need Rachel's intelligence to escape the building, the man introduces himself as Zack, claiming that he is an idiot and that if Rachel helped him out of the building, he would kill her. The two travel up to B4, a place entirely made out of stone and modeled after a graveyard, with graves for them as well. The two split up to investigate the area. Rachel explores and finds a library containing records of every sacrifice in the building as well as a mysterious letter promising her that the writer knows her true wish. Flipping through the records, she finds Zack's real name to be Isaac Foster, an infamous serial killer that used to roam the deserted alleyways in search of victims. Meanwhile as Zack destroys gravestones out of boredom, he accidentally activates a switch allowing Rachel to proceed further into the building, Rachel soon returns and reveals that she has learned about his past. However instead of being afraid like Zack has expected, Rachel simply reminds Zack her wish to be killed. Proceeding their way they are confronted by a boy wearing a pumpkin mask. The boy Edward Mason reveals himself to be the inhabitant of B4 and wants to kill and bury Rachel after having fallen in love with her at first sight, after a brief skirmish Edward flees and finds Rachel offering to grant her wish for death. However Rachel hesitates when she realizes that Zack won't be able to escape if she dies. Following her through the opening, Zack manages to track down the two and swears to God on their promise, immediately convincing Rachel to side with him, furious at her rejection, Edward switches off the lights and attempts to use the darkness of his floor to his advantage to kill, but Rachel thwarts his plans and steals his remote control. With the lights back on, Zack easily kills Edward and buries him in the grave originally meant for Rachel, the two proceed on the elevator up to floor B3, where they enter a prison-like environment. Rachel and Zack discover that B3 is controlled by Catherine, Kathy Ward, a sadistic prison warden who forces the pair through various obstacles and booby traps as punishment for their crimes, in the first room they enter, Zack accidentally traps himself in an electric chair and is repeatedly shocked with Kathy giving Rachel a hint on how to rescue him. Rachel figures out that the dummies in the room are controlling the chair, upon destroying the dummies, Zack is freed and the door to the next room is unlocked, they enter and are trapped in a gas chamber slowly filling with poison gas. Kathy explains they must solve a puzzle to escape and they have one gas mask to share, but they have a limited time before she releases an even deadlier poison gas that renders the mask useless. Rachel seemingly solves the first stage of the puzzle by balancing a scale, but she begins to succumb to the gas as the time limit runs out. Rachel notices that an air vent has opened and Zack boosts her up to reach it, allowing her to recover a keycard, however in his haste to open the door, Zack breaks the card just as time runs out and the second gas begins to be pumped into the room, Rachel deduces the flammable properties of the gas, creating a spark that triggers an explosion to destroy the door. Despite their escape the two are weakened by the gas and decide to rest, where Zack recalls a dream from his childhood when he lived under abusive caretakers, when they proceed to the next room, he is forced to relive his childhood through a dollhouse puzzle mimicking his past further agitating him. The obstacle the next room holds finally cracks Zack, involving two syringes, one being harmless and the other containing a dangerous hallucinatory drug. 
As he injects both into himself to spare Rachel, Zack's past returns to haunt him, causing him to become more aggressive and threatening to kill Rachel, her reminder of the oath finally forces Zack to calm himself down and reaffirms it. In a flashback it is revealed that Zack murdered his abusive caretakers after being inspired by a horror slasher movie, in the present Zack begins succumbing to the drug again and Rachel is chased into the final room of the floor where Kathy herself is, in exhilaration Kathy gives Rachel a gun and suggests she kill Zack with it. Barely managing to get a hold of himself, Zack encourages Rachel but she refuses, telling him that it's their choice to kill or be killed. Impressed by her words Zack stabs himself to uphold their oath, angering Kathy who exits her safe room to inspect his body. Upon finding that he is still alive, she gleefully promises to torture him to death and threatens Rachel with a machine-controlled gun installed on the ceiling, revealing that the gun she had given her was unloaded the whole time. Instead Rachel calmly takes out another fully loaded gun hidden in her bag and shoots Kathy in the stomach. This momentary distraction weakens her and lets Zack regain sufficient consciousness to deal the finishing blow, Rachel and Zack proceed to the elevator, where Rachel reveals she was in counseling after witnessing a murder when Zack collapses from his wounds. The two proceed to the elevator but Zack collapses from his wounds and is slowly bleeding to death. This forces Rachel to keep moving ahead alone in hopes of finding anything that can heal him, meeting a priest named Abraham G. Rachel on his floor modeled after a church complex. G. Rachel and Rachel make a deal whereby he will lead her back down to B5 Daniel's floor, which stores the necessary medical gear, and in the process be allowed to let her go through a test to judge her character, just before doing so she promises Zack to retrieve a knife from his floor as well. Following G. Rachel down to Kathy's floor again, Rachel is instructed to restore power to the elevator in order to proceed further, and while beside him smells a strange bewitchingly sweet gas emanating from him. Journeying through the jail cells again, she is attacked by Kathy's zombie-like prisoners, now set free in her absence, Rachel flees to the control room activating Kathy's fire armament and booby traps to eliminate them. Rachel is shocked to find Kathy's body missing, and is taunted by a hallucination of Kathy praising her as an exemplary sinner for her cold-heartedness, they continue down to Edward's floor, where Rachel ruthlessly crushes screaming stuffed hands emerging from the upturned graves to activate the elevator, referring them as simply doll hands. Like Kathy, Edward's grave is upturned and his body is missing, and Rachel is once again taunted by a hallucination of Edward who questions her lack of compassion, G. Rachel expresses discomfort at Rachel's actions all the while observing her in each floor. Finally they reach Daniel's floor, only for Rachel to discover in a panic that all the medicine in Daniel's body are missing, with no other choice she follows G. Rachel back to Zack's floor. Meanwhile back on B2, Zack has a continued dream of his childhood where he murdered another passing woman after his caretakers. Taken in by a kind old blind man, Zack tries to sate his urge to kill by murdering a random man in hopes that the blind man would fear him, however the man merely leaves to buy more food, and Zack soon discovers that the blind man was murdered by a pair of gleeful muggers. Realizing that destroying people's happiness was satisfying for him, Zack kills the pair and declares that he is a monster, Daniel then approaches the unconscious Zack and wonders if he should kill him. Daniel tells the now awake Zack how he survived using body armor and fake blood, offering medicine to Zack in return for him gouging out Rachel's eyes, Zack refuses and Daniel takes his leave, meanwhile Rachel finds Zack's knife in a makeshift bedroom, and upon observing the room realizes that she still knows nothing about him. Journeying back up to Gratchel's floor, the priest questions Rachel's motives and concludes that she is a selfish witch who causes misfortune to those around her additionally demeaning Rachel's firm belief in her god. Distressed she flees and reunites with Zack, deciding to follow Daniel's trail of blood to get medicine, on the way Zack is forced to fight off a giant snake, sapping his strength even further, gathering her courage Rachel decides to chase after Daniel alone, and Zack gives her his knife for protection. Rachel runs into G. Rachel who reveals that he has confiscated the medicine Daniel was carrying, the scene shifts to a courtroom with G. Rachel presiding as the judge over a witch trial to determine her identity with the hallucinations of Daniel, Edward and Kathy to testify against her. Kathy points out that Rachel is hiding a lying heart under her calm facade, Edward laments that Rachel is selfish, and Daniel boasts of her corrupted soul that is beyond saving, with all the testimonies against her, G. 
G-Rachel declares Rachel a witch and sentences her to be burned at the stake. As Rachel is about to burn in the fire, she reflects on her relationship with Zack, and finally comes to conclusion that he is her god, the one who had always helped and saved her when she needed it most. Cutting herself with his knife, Rachel successfully returns to the present, deducing that G-Rachel has been using drugs to create illusions on his floor. With death threats G-Rachel surrenders and gifts her the medicine, which Rachel uses to stop the bleeding disinfect the wound, and stitch it up, declaring her realization to him, as they proceed to the final floor B1, Zack reveals that his mother's lover set him on fire, resulting in him sustaining burns all over his body that had to be covered up with bandages. And his mother selling him off to an illegal orphanage that trafficked children, Rachel attempts to tell him a secret of hers as well, but cannot bring herself to in fear that he will hate her for lying to him all this time, the elevator finally stops at B1, a dimly lit house with grey furnishings. Zack heads deeper into the floor opening a room at the end of the corridor filled with fake flowers and the corpses of a couple unnaturally stitched together with thread, Rachel begins to go hysterical, begging him to kill her before fainting. Daniel then arrives suddenly and locks Zack out of the room, offering to unlock it only if he can fully explore the floor and find out Rachel's past, Zack reluctantly begins exploring the floor, managing to fight his way through various death traps only to fall into a hole filled with sharp spikes. Saved by G-Rachel the priest explains that he controls the entire building as an experimental facility to study and observe those who claim to believe in God, with those placed in B7 as sacrifices that are to be judged by the angels on each floor. Deciding to place some interest in their relationship, he provides Zack with a clue on how to proceed, allowing him to enter Rachel's room, a recorded news report details the murders of Mr. and Mrs. Gardner, a couple in wedlock whose bodies had been mutilated badly with bullet and knife wounds and were stitched together. Meanwhile their daughter Rachel was found completely unharmed even though a week had passed after their deaths, implying that she murdered her parents. Zack continues watching a recording of an interview between Daniel and Rachel, where Rachel reveals that her parents were abusive and hated her and each other. One night her father finally snapped and stabbed her mother to death, prompting her to take her mother's gun and shoot her father to death. Afterwards she stitched their bodies together in order to create the perfect family, and lived happily with them until the police arrived, noticing her blank blue eyes, Daniel reveals to Rachel that his mother committed suicide due to him having been born missing an eye, and he becomes obsessed with Rachel since her eyes resemble his mother's. Angry and disgusted Zack storms back to where Rachel and Daniel are and proclaims his suspicions that Rachel is in fact the angel of B1 which Daniel confirms, and reveals that Rachel was sent to B7 after finding newfound faith in God by reading a Bible. Knowing that she lied to him, Zack angrily declares that he is not Rachel's God. Disillusioned Rachel brought out her reloaded gun and shot Zack but missed, Rachel flees luring Zack through more traps until he manages to corner her in the last room. He once again asks her if she intends to kill him when Daniel arrives and holds him a gunpoint. Cornered by the two of them Rachel then calmly draws her gun and fires. Rachel shoots Daniel much to his surprise, claiming that Zack is hers to kill and sew up, however she remains conflicted since she has lost her faith in her god, meaning there is nobody left to forgive her for her crimes, and hesitates in shooting Zack. Pushing her down Zack reminds Rachel that he is the one who made the promise to kill her not her god, shaking Rachel back to her senses, the two swear to each other again on their vow and attempt to continue their way out. Although B1 is Rachel's floor she is unaware of its location even after knowing every nook and cranny of the place, deducing that the exit must be on B2 due to her floor being the last to be built and the strange observation that no one ever came down from above. While on the way to reactivate the elevator, she encounters G. Rachel with questions her intentions and her identity, telling him that she has accepted herself and will hence take responsibility for her own actions and choices from now on, satisfied with her answer, G. Rachel gives her a hint that the exit is behind the huge stained glass window of his floor. When Zack and Rachel reunite, they try to find her gun as well but realize Daniel's body is missing once again and that Rachel's gun has been destroyed, together they warily return to B2 where Zack smashes through the stained glass window to reveal a long flight of stairs leading to the surface, just then the building's self-destruct sequence is initiated. Rachel and Zack flee up the stairs as the facility begins to burn and collapse, 
but their way is blocked by steel bars, Zack briefly has a panic attack due to his fear of fire, but he manages to regain his senses upon seeing Rachel struggling to break the bars. Overcoming his fear Zack manages to break through the bars and all other obstacles, though he breaks his scythe in the process, they finally reach the top floor, where Rachel asks Zack if he truly wants to kill her, and she wouldn't fault him if he changed his mind, Zack reaffirms the promise he made when Daniel arrives and shoots Rachel in the back. He reveals he was the one who activated the self-destruct sequence and holds Zack at gunpoint to watch Rachel die, so he will have to live with the knowledge he couldn't fulfill his promise, Rachel assures Zack that she doesn't care if their vow is fulfilled or not, only that the vow was made in the first place. And she will carry the burden of their vow so Zack doesn't need to think of himself as a liar, jealous of Rachel's affection for Zack, Daniel shoots Rachel again and prepares to kill Zack when G. Rachel disables him with a crossbow. Gray orders Zack to leave through the exit, assuring him there is still a chance to save Rachel, Zack picks up Rachel's body and heads for the door with Daniel still pointing his gun at his back. G. Rachel shoots Daniel again to prevent him from shooting Zack, as Zack carries Rachel through the exit G. Rachel has a final conversation with Daniel, revealing that he became fascinated with how Rachel and Zack managed to change each other, and how he's come to realize that everybody is a human both flawed and beautiful. The building then collapses presumably killing both Daniel and G. Rachel, Zack is able to reach the surface just as the police arrive to investigate the building collapse, surrendering to the police so Rachel can be taken to a hospital. After recovering from her wounds, Rachel is taken to a mental care facility where the staff attempt to rehabilitate her with limited success, deemed guilty for his murder spree as well as killing Rachel's parents and kidnapping her, Rachel is informed that Zack is sentenced to death. However shortly after hearing the news, Zack breaks into Rachel's room to fulfill their oath having escaped prison, as they both leap out of the window to escape, Rachel once again pleads for Zack to kill her, which Zack reaffirms by telling her to stop crying and smile. By the time the police arrive the room is already empty with a splatter of blood on the windowsill and Zack's knife on the floor. So this is the end of anime, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it.